knuckles for eight. And Rohan will answer. Master the Rohirrim. Hey guys, my name is Bando. This is Brokes of Bando, and hopefully there's no clickbait title on this because I haven't figured out when I'm going to have it yet. But um, yeah, I've got a couple of things to talk about. Um, so the first up, Heresy Thursday. We've got a Heresy Thursday, which is actually a full-scale Heresy Thursday, which shouldn't be so much of a surprise because we've had quite a lot of them recently. Um, yes, so we have uh, Endrid Ha, the Riven Hound, or according to this model, the Rivet Hound. Uh, a word, no word, world eater. I always get those two mixed up. A world eater who became a black shield and fought basically anything that moved. He's supposed to be this absolute giant guy, um, and he was very, very angry. So what we have here is a Mark V heresy pattern clad marine, and he has seen better days. He's been very heavily damaged, and you can see the different layers of ceramite in his armor, and it's all pinned together with these molecular bonding studs. And it's a very interesting model for a couple of reasons. Um, and the first is it's the second time we've seen the the new modern kind of interpretation of Mark V. The first being the new Mark V Apothecary that was uh, shown off a couple of weeks back. But this one looks different, obviously, because he's bigger. Um... I'm not sure how I feel about it, if I'm going to be honest. Um, it's very chunky. He looks more like a, a, a 3D print, like one of Fumblefinger's models, in just how big and chunky he is. Um, this lower leg looks like it's going to be sort of twice as thick as an old Mark V model. And his head is is quite small compared to the rest of him. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about this. I like Mark V. Mark V is is one of my favourite armor marks by far. Um, so I'm going to quickly go through the bits I don't like about this um, and that I have slight concerns about. One, the damage on his armor. Okay. It shows us that he's been through a lot of combat and he can't repair his armor as much. But I'm not a big fan of it. Because I can't use this model basically for anything else now. Without having to do some, you know, pretty hefty repairs. Um, if the damage was more like this on the collar with just a slight chip, maybe some dings and dents like these ones down here. But the fact is it goes all the way down to the sort of sub-level of the Ceramite just bugs me a little bit. Uh, the damage around his face is fine. I'm okay with that. That's pretty cool. Um, the scale of this armor I don't like. The tilt shield having this very aggressive angle on it. Again, I'm not a fan of. And... Lastly, the one thing I'm I'm not really a fan of is the pistol, his architect pistol. It's always been depicted as being like a revolver. Um, it was plumbed into his power pack before. I do like the power pack. Um, it's ironic because that's actually the style of power pack Mark VI armor used to have. Um, so, a bit wild that we didn't get this <laughs> before. Um, but yeah, I'm not a big fan of it. It, it looks too Votan. It looks very much like the Necromunda Squat stuff. And I get it. That's because Necromunda Squats and Votan have access to more, you know, Dark Age of Technology sort of equipment. And that's what it's supposed to be. I'm just not a big fan. And I'm sure people are going to 3D print replacements. And if I was going to run this guy, I'd probably get one of those... I don't know who can't remember his name, but he does some really good Raven Guard 3D prints, and he does some fantastic like chunky revolvers, and I'd probably use one of those. The next thing I don't like, and is is a bit silly, is the Legion iconography on him. Endred Har is supposed to be the last kind of Warhound. He never really became a World Eater. 
He never got the butcher's nails. He wasn't really there when Angron turned up. Um, so by the time that the heresy kicked off, he was nowhere near them. He was well away from them. So it would have felt more kind of appropriate for him to have more Warhound iconography. But this Iron Halo having the teeth on it just seems a bit off. Same with the teeth on the back of his boot. Not a problem. That one can be filled in quite easily. And that's going to be a bit of a pain, but that can be trimmed off and filed smooth. Um, as can probably, you know, the damaged shoulder pad. I like the pose on the model. I can probably see myself using this in a different army. But I'm not sure what as. One other thing I don't like is that the rivets are square. I've always liked the round rivets. I don't like that these have got kind of a square edge to them. They look very rough. Which I get, I understand the concept of the, you know, what these are there for and everything, but it just bugs me a little bit. I don't like the shape of them. They've always been circular. Not a fan of this. I do like the fact that his undersuit appears to be a lot heavier, a lot more kind of crude. That's kind of cool. Um, and that we have the studs you know there is a there's a picture from the new book floating around with a blood angels on it and some people think there's a mark 5 marine in the background and he doesn't appear to have any studs on his lower legs which i would have a problem with so if they keep these studs on here that will be you know good um this is not a day one purchase for me I like it. I, I don't mind it. I'm very happy that we have this character. I'm very happy that we're getting some more stuff. Um, this is the third um, World Eaters character, I think. Khan, Angron, and this guy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. So, hopefully we get some more. Um, we've got Shadrach Med Medusin, I know, is one that's in the Beta Garmin book. Um, so, that's what I'm looking forward to. So, that's all I'm going to say on here. Um, the next is the drama. Now, in my last video, I talked about how it's okay to just not care about drama. And it is. It is absolutely fine to not care about drama. But I did want to touch on this drama, the Dawn of Fire drama. Um, and there's a couple of bits here. The first is that some people are a little upset that the Votan are only now getting some fiction and it's going to be in a dawn of fire novel because nick kimes last dawn of fire novel apparently was awful um was pointless nothing happened it was just not a good novel but it had the sisters of science i think was in it and they were basically in it for a single scene but they were all over the cover so people are worried that the same thing's going to happen with the vote town okay that's fine but that's not the drama i really want to talk about the drama I really want to talk about is this guy. There's a lot of people thinking out there, what am I going to say next? Is Bando going to be incredibly based, or is he just going to be a simp? Well, the answer is, I'm going to be me. I'm going to be, as I've been called repeatedly recently, uh, the realist YouTuber. Some people don't like a black guy on the cover of this book. Okay, they can have that opinion. It's an opinion. It's like an arsehole. Everyone has one. I have no problem with that whatsoever. He's a human being. That's what's supposed to be inside Space Marine armor. Sort of. But the biggest issue I had was some of the posts I saw on Twitter recently. My ban is now over, by the way. Um, where some people were like, Oh, I'm so glad people are talking about the Votan and not complaining about a black guy being on the cover. And that's where my problem is, is that these weirdo, what are they called, woke hammer types, who are just angry people, are desperate to try and paint the rest of us as racist, misogynistic, sexist, phobes, istenphobes and everything. And when we're not being that, they have to imply that we are through, you know, a backhanded compliment. Oh, I'm so glad there's a woman on the cover and people aren't pissed off at the man. Okay, fine, whatever. 
this is why we gatekeep and why you should gatekeep because people like that are not healthy for this hobby they don't actually care about this hobby they care about their social credit they care about sticking it to the chuds and making you know anyone they don't like suffer and frankly those sorts of people should be kicked out of this hobby and they should be punished like in society they they should suffer some sort of social repercussions from trying to cause division they should be told no you're not welcome here fuck off you know go away don't stick your nose in here don't try and stop like start trouble you're not welcome here now if you are a person whose only interest in 40k is reading novels and maybe the dawn of fire novels are your favorite series you're welcome here you know what and if you want to talk about them and tell me how great they are, I will listen. I'll ask questions. I'll rec make you recommendations for other books. You know, if you just want to collect these books, and even if it's just this, maybe Nick Kimes your favourite author. That is just as valid as someone who has sat on top of 30 years worth of models, who has been to Warhammer World, has spent enough money to probably buy a house on models. You're just as valuable to the hobby, in my opinion. But if your hobby is sitting on Twitter, trying to incite hate towards another group because you don't like them, and you follow them around the internet into different sectors, fandoms, and all that, and you claim to be a fan of something just so you can change it to fit your worldview and you want to harass people and ruin their fun. Because this is what these people on Twitter have admitted to. They're doing it to ruin our spaces. Then go away. Go and sit in a small room and suffocate yourself with your own farts for all I care. Because you're not welcome here. I don't want you here. Go away. I want people who see this in a bookshop and they read it and then they post on discord or on a forum like bolter and chainsaw or they go onto a youtube comment and they go hey i've just picked up this uh, dawn of fire novel it didn't make much sense but i'd love to know more about it where should i start well come into my pile into my parlor said the spider to the fly because i'm about to unleash like a billion books on you 12 years of novels and I'm going to drag you into the Horus Heresy kicking and screaming. The last thing I want to talk about is a fellow YouTube creator. I'm not going to bother getting the details up here because I'm sure you've seen it. Um, you've probably heard of the YouTuber Zorpazorp, who's a I believe he's Kiwi. He lives in New Zealand. I don't know if he's actually Kiwi himself. Zorphosorp's really big in the terrain making kind of sphere. He makes these fantastic um, terrain boards, especially like Lord of the Rings stuff. He's very much into the, the Middle Earth strategy battle game, which is a, definitely an underrepresented side of the Warhammer hobby. Zorphosorp's been having some trouble recently, um, as have a lot of YouTubers. Um, YouTube is making it very difficult for people like us to create things and be rewarded for it, compensated for it, paid. Um, to put it in perspective, the last month and a half, I have seen half the numbers across the board from every metric, despite any attempts I have had to, you know, put stuff out there. And this is very common in this time of year, but according to some other YouTubers I've spoken to, this is worse. It's, it's getting worse. Um, YouTube is making it harder and harder, they keep making things stricter, they keep refusing to pay out on things, and Zorpazorp unfortunately has had to rely on his Patreon subscribers um, to survive, basically. He has a young family, he has kids, um, and you know he's having to close his business. So his business is going to be open for another, I think, week or two, which is Zorpazorp.com, if I remember correctly. If you are at that side of the world and you're looking for terrain supplies and hobby supplies go and check it out and help him shift his last bits of stock so he isn't stuffed with everything at the end but also he's given himself one more year one more year to continue making content and trying to get those numbers back up 
So if you're not subscribed to Zorpa Zorp, and I will make sure there's a link in the description to his channel, go and check him out. Because he does a really good job of building great terrain tables. And if you've been playing 40k and your terrain is just a bunch of blocks with a big open bit in the middle where everything piles in, try like have a look at these boards and think about what it'd be like actually playing on some of them because trust me when you've played on a board with a load of terrain where movement matters where it looks like it's actually real like it's a real place it doesn't just look like a bunch of most of the time unpainted terrain or primed terrain just plotted down it's a totally different game Especially, like, if you go off and play something like Bolt Action as well. Bolt Action on a really good table feels almost like a World War II movie. And again, Lord of the Rings. If you guys are into Lord of the Rings... I know a lot of you guys are into Lord of the Rings. Who doesn't know Lord of the Rings? Lord of the Rings is amazing. Um, and apparently there's also a pipeline to the far right, according to weirdos. Um, <laughs> uh, if you like Lord of the Rings, go check out his channel. So... Go and help out a fellow creator. I'm sure most of you have probably already been subscribed to his channel. But he's very friendly. He's very, you know, non-offensive. He's not political. He doesn't get dramaed. He's just Zorbazor. And he's really good at making terrain. That's it, guys. That's all I really wanted to talk about. Um, Heresy Thursday. It's a good one that we got another one. Alright. Well, thank you for watching. Um, as always... Please feel free to use my Element Games ref um, reward code at the bottom. If you shop at Element Games, it will double your reward points. Um, you can pick up all sorts of stuff there. Uh, GW stuff, Lord of the Rings, anything like that. At sort of 15 to 25% off. I have recently applied to an affiliate program for a US store. Um, if I hear back from them, I will let you guys know. All right, thank you very much for watching. Oh, update on my mother. Thank you very much for everyone who's inquired. Uh, she is doing much better. Um, the numbers on her infection are going down. Um, they have just moved her into the pre-surgery prep ward for like amputations, but it's because they had to run out of space in other parts of the hospital. So we were a little bit worried there that I was going to end up with Robo Mum. Um, but it looks like she's going to be okay. She's going to be in there in it for a couple more days. And then they're going to send her home. And a nurse is going to come visit her. She's probably going to be on antibiotics for like three weeks apparently. Which is going to do an absolute number on her. Not as much as not being able to drink for three weeks. But thank you guys. Everyone who's reached out to me. Everyone who sent me messages. All the comments. Um, I have passed on. And, and the look on her face when she saw that, you know random strangers on the internet were wishing her the best. And were praying for her. Just really cheered her up so thank you guys you are an amazing community and you know i can't i can't get over it i can't get over how great you are um thank you so much have a great day it's friday tomorrow um keep powering through guys we're nearly there have a great day bye bye